I'll stay up here and keep an eye on him for you until he goes away. Thanks, Jen. And we'll try and find out some more about this mysterious clearing. Psst. It's us. We didn't want to run into that bull elephant again, so we disguised ourselves as trees. Andy, I calculate that this plan has a number of potential errors. Would you like me to list them? Maybe we should figure out how the clearing was made first. Why don't you take a look from up there? I detect no signs of human activity. No roads or machinery. Only animals. Buffalo. Antelope. And elephants. Lots of elephants. Hmm, I wonder. Do you think the elephants have been coming here for a long time? Affirmative. There are many old elephant tracks leading in from the forest. Then perhaps it's the elephants who made the clearing. They're certainly big enough. Hmm. But why? Scout, let's split up and look for clues. <laughs> oh, what if I join you? It's a mum and her calf. Woo! It's hard work keeping up with elephants. <laughs> Even little ones. Oh! Mum stopped for a drink. I don't blame her. It's very hot out here in the sun. Elephants use their trunks in all sorts of different ways. Trumpeting. Picking things up. Drinking, smelling, and even washing themselves. And me, for that matter. Thanks for that. Oh. Learning to use a trunk takes a bit of practice, though. You need to put it into the puddle, like Mum, for a nice, refreshing drink. Hang on. Maybe that's it. Andy to Scout, can you see any elephants drinking? Affirmative. Many. Other elephants are also digging down in the mud to find water. So the elephants are coming to the clearing for a drink. <laughs> Confirm. Oh, how cute! There's been a baby boom. <laughs> right, first of all, we need to work out who's here. Spotted hyena clan. Mostly female. Estimate, 60 individuals, including 12 newborn cubs, approximately 12 weeks of age. Thanks, Scout. I wonder what they're all saying to each other. <laughs> High-ranking hyena mother identified, along with her two female cubs. Ah, oh, well spotted, Scout. Andy to Jen. We found a high-ranking female with her twin sister cubs. Great work, you two. I think you should stick with them and keep watching for any interesting behaviours. Understood, Jen. Andy out. Before we get any closer, let's shrink down so we don't scare them. Engage shrink mode. <laughs> Whoa! What's <Watch> it? <laughs> Out! <laughs> oh, now play nicely. Andy, a low ranking male, has approached the mother. <laughs> she is displaying some unusual body language. Hmm. What's going on there? Jen, check this out. Something really interesting is happening with the mother. Replaying video feed. I see it. She's making herself look bigger. Wait, there's something else. Her tail, Andy, is pointing straight up. Hmm. What's she doing now? I wonder. <laughs> Mum's showing her teeth to another smaller male. And the male is backing away, bobbing his head. It's almost like he's trying to show them he's not a threat. This must be part of their secret code. And now the sisters are copying their mum. Oh, you're right, Jen. 
This must be their way of saying we're more important than you are. <laughs> oh. Oh. Andy, oh. incoming communication from Jen. Go ahead, Jen. Andy, I've spent the night setting up my subterranean scanner. It detects where animals are hiding underground. Oh, wow, that sounds brilliant. It says there's something in your aardvark burrow. Oh, no. I must have nodded off and completely missed the aardvark when he came back from feeding. Negative. As instructed, I have not taken my eyes off the burrow. No aardvark has entered. Well, then who's in the burrow? According to the scanner, it's not one animal, it's several. That's odd. Aardvarks usually live on their own. Hmm. Detective Scout, you stay here and keep watch. I'm going to sneak in and take a closer look. Engage shrink mode. Great. Right. See you later, Scout. Oh! I'm OK. Here's the burrow. I can hear something. Whoa! It's another painted wolf. Well, what's she doing in an aardvark burrow? Oh, she's here with her pups. Female painted wolves often move into empty burrows left behind by other animals because they need a safe place to give birth. Oh, <laughs> careful, little one. Oh, they're tiny. They're only a few weeks old. This might be the first time they've ever come out. Jen, Scout, are you seeing this? Affirmative, Andy. The whole pack of painted wolves is here. This explains why HQ's camera didn't record the aardvark. It's not using this burrow anymore. But where did it go? My scanner isn't picking up any large animal underground but it's picking up hundreds and thousands of tiny animals in the ground nearby. Hmm, it sounds like an ant or a termite nest. And aardvarks like to eat ants and termites. Yes! Great detective work, gang. Scout, you drop the equipment back at the Explorer and meet me at the nest. Affirmative. To painted walls. I'd love to stay and play, but you're not the animal I'm looking for. At last, dinner time. Now, personally, flowers aren't really my thing. He seems to love them. I wonder why. Maybe Jen knows. Andy to Jen. Oh, hi, Andy. Is the hamster doing anything unusual? Well. He's eating some freshly cut flowers that people have left, but... Oh, hang on. Where's he off to? What is he after? Um... Jen, are you seeing this? I am, yes. Are those candles? Yep. And it seems to be eating the wax. Don't you ever do that. It's not good for you. Well, that is unusual. Let me investigate. <laughs> It says here that candle wax is full of oil and high in calories. It's bad for people and for pet hamsters too, but good energy food for wild hamsters like the ones here. Of course. Well, that makes sense. It's late summer here, but in order to survive the winter, hamsters need to fatten up. And what better way to do it than on fresh flowers and high energy candle wax? <laughs> My scans also deduce that a hamster's cheeks can hold a quarter of its body weight. Wow, that's impressive. Well, in that case, my friend, stock up on as much candle wax as your cheeks can take. Hey, do you think we've solved the mystery, Jen? Well, hamsters running amok, fighting in a churchyard while feasting on flowers and candles. Sounds pretty unusual to me. And speaking of unusual... This adventure gets more bizarre by the second. Here. Now, let me help you get free. Try not to panic. Or you could just roll around hoping it will fall off. Ah, oh, there we go. Free at last. Glad I could help. 
those furry cheeks have got you into some mischief today, eh? Well, my work here is done. See you later, hamster. We're a bit stuck. There's an alligator blocking our path. An alligator? That sounds serious. They can be very dangerous. Is there anything you can do to help us get past it? Uh, let me see. That's interesting. What is it? It says here alligators are far less active in the winter months, as they're cold-blooded reptiles who get their warmth from sunbathing. Like turtles. Exactly. According to this, if you're very careful, keep your distance and don't make much noise, you should be able to get past it without any trouble. Thanks, Jane. How's the Explorer? All sorted. I managed to use the thrusters to hover us out of the swamp water. It was just a simple matter of recalibrating the directional controls and adjusting the water resistance as well as heat and pressure balance. Brilliant. Nice one, Jen. Thanks, Andy. And good luck finding a manatee. Come on, Scout. We need to keep our distance and be quiet if we're going to get past this sleepy alligator. Safely passed. Right, now to find a manatee. But we may not be able to spot one on the riverbed from up here. It's looking pretty deep. I think it might be time for a dip. Activating underwater mode. Uploading aqua suit. Great! Time to get wet. Oh, look! A manatee! And not just one, there's two of them. A mother and a baby. Oh, don't they look incredible? Affirmative. Manatees are herbivores. That means they eat plants, not fish. They particularly like grazing on seagrass, which is probably why manatees are sometimes called sea cows. What's the temperature like, Scout? Scanning. 17 degrees Celsius and dropping. Oh, I wonder how they're going to keep warm. They look like they know where they're going. These manatees are definitely on a mission. Let's follow them. No! No, stay there! Wait! There's a croc in the water! Oh, it's no good. They can't hear me. Maybe Jen can help. Andy? Jen, there's a mother and baby monkey about to cross the river, but there's a hungry crocodile waiting for them. Oh, dear. I'll see what I can find that might help. In the meantime, the booster upgrade is complete, so I'll send Scout to your coordinates right away. Nice one, Jen. Initiating AI transformation. Transformation complete. Crossing route to Andy's last known location. Scout! Over here! That really was fast. Andy, I've been looking on the database and I've discovered crocodiles are attracted to splashes in the water because they think it might be food. If we get Scout to make splashes in the water, that should lure the crocodile away. Great idea, Jen. Ready, Scout? Affirmative. Initiating aquatic pulsations. It's working! Uh, keep going, Scout! I'm just in time. It looks like Mum's about to jump. Yes! They've made it! Great job, Scout! I'm sorry, Andy. The height to booster pressure ratio is incompatible at this size. That's all right, Scout. Perhaps you should shrink down? Initiating atomic miniaturization. Hi, Jen. Hi, Andy. Is everything okay there now? All sorted. Thanks for your help. You and Scout really saved the day. Everything here is either brown or... or bright red. According to my gizmo, these are snow plants. 
and they have a brilliant way to live without sunlight. They get everything they need from the roots of the sequoia trees. Oh! It looks like I'm not the only one who wants a closer look at these little plants. It's an Anna's hummingbird. But I don't want to scare her off. So, activate shrink mode. Great! During the winter months, there's not much food for this hummingbird to eat, so this plant and other plants are essential for keeping it fed. When hummingbirds drink the nectar, they're also helping to spread the pollen of the snow plant, meaning these colourful plants will pop up all over the forest. I wonder if a better view will help me spot those missing bears. Hmm. Maybe my new friend can give me a ride. Oh! She must have finished feeding. But with so little food around, I think this plant is too delicious a meal for it to stay quiet around here for very... long. This one's male. He's a lot more colourful than the female. Uh, hopefully he doesn't mind having a passenger whilst he's enjoying his snack. Uh, do you mind if I get on? Uh, uh, ready when you are. Uh-oh. It's a rufous hummingbird. And it looks like it's after the nectar from these snow plants, too. This could mean trouble. So, if you don't mind, I'm just going to get... Whoa! 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 I better hold on tight. Whoa! Hey, you two! Play nicely! You need to both learn how to share! Whoa! Whoa. That wasn't quite the lift I had in mind, but at least it was a quick getaway. And I've got a much better view of the forest from up here. But thanks for the lift. I think I'll continue on foot from here, though. Multiple tracks identified. Plotting course to destination. It's just as HQ said. These tracks are all leading in the same direction. But what's making them and where are they leading to? Wait a second. What's that up ahead? Oh, it's a bear! Wow! Oh, maybe that's the animal we're looking for. Well, there's certainly nothing else wandering around out here. Apart from me. Jen, I've spotted an animal I think might be making the tracks in the snow. A bear! Amazing! Well, it's certainly a contender, Andy. Let me run its image against the footprint. Ah, it's a perfect match! That's the animal we're looking for, Andy. It's a Kamchatkan brown bear. Oh, I'm lucky to see one of those. It must have just come out of hibernation after a long winter's sleep. Well, that's half the mission solved. Now we just need to find out where it's going and why. Scout, anything to report? Affirmative, Jen. Patching video feed to you now. Animal tracks end at this ridge. Uh, is that a volcano? Your analysis is correct, Andy. Why would a bear deliberately go to a volcano, Andy? I guess that's what we need to find out. I'm going to follow that bear. Be careful, Andy. Will do. Thanks, Jen. OK, to the volcano. The things we do for HQ. Oh, hey, Bear. What are you up to? A volcano doesn't seem like a very sensible place for you to be hanging out. They're dangerous, you know. Affirmative. My aerial reconnaissance has confirmed that Kamchatka has the highest density of active volcanoes anywhere on the planet. Oh, how lovely. Temperatures underground reach 250 degrees Celsius, creating bubbles of boiling mud and clouds of steam. Like I said, dangerous and hot. This is as far as I go. Scout, can you follow safely? Thermal protection mode engaged. 
Well, it's lovely being here, but I still don't know what those mystery brown patches are. Charming. Well, I suppose when you've got to go, you've got to go. Oh, and there's another one at it. Must be all that regurgitated fish. That's it! The brown patches on the ice must be penguin poo. Well, it can't be very nice to sit in your own poo, so the colony must have to move a little bit every day to get away from it. And with so many penguins pooing everywhere, that's why you can see them from space! Well, it looks like another mystery solved. <laughs> now we can head back to the Explorer and upload our findings to the database. Now, where's Scout got to? Oh, oh dear. I forgot about the blizzard. I need to find some shelter. But where? Andy! Andy! I'm over here playing hide-and-seek with my new penguin friends. It also offers shelter from the weather. Would you like to join us? Great idea, Scout! Time to become an honorary penguin. Ready or not, here I come! That's better! It's a bit warmer in here! This is how Emperor Penguins survive the cold, by huddling together. And look, the little ones have made a huddle of their own too, just like the adults. Well, I guess this is all we can do. We just have to sit here and wait now, penguin style. The Ivory Coast is home to loads of different animals. In fact, it has the biggest variety of species in the whole of West Africa. There's over 1,200 different species that live here, including monkeys, tree frogs, and even forest elephants, like that one over there. Forest elephants are incredible creatures. They eat lots of fruit and vegetation, spreading seeds from their dung as they travel through the trees. And some people call them the mega gardener of the forest. Forest elephants can be a bit jumpy, so I'd better keep out of their way. <laughs> Jen said the trees were half a mile west of the Explorer. Which way's west? This way. Actually, I think it's back this way. <laughs> Uh-oh, I'm stuck. <laughs> Jen? Jen! Jen! Uh. Jen? I'm here, Andy. What's wrong? Well, I've gone and got myself into a bit of a tangle. Let me guess. The vines? They're causing a few issues here, too. Uh. Hold on. Sending Scout to your location to help. Stay where you are. Will do. Don't really have much choice. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Destination reached. We've made it. But where are we this time? Any ideas, Jen? 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 Oh, sorry, Andy. Um, according to the map, we're flying above the wetlands of Thailand in Southeast Asia. Engage hover mode. Accessing fact file. Thailand is home to lots of animals, including elephants, water buffalo, long-tailed macaques, and purple swamp hens. File deleted. Oh, what happened? The Explorer has a computer virus. It's been deleting files from the wildlife database all morning. Oh, dear. That purple swamp hen file might have been useful. There are lots of them living here in the wetlands. Yes, I better try and get the computer cleaned up straight away. Caution, Jen. Soap and water do not mix well with electrical equipment. Oh, don't worry, Scout. It's not that sort of cleaning. 
I just need to find the corrupted files and remove them. Hopefully, I can get it done before HQ call with another mission. Incoming mission from HQ. Incoming mission from HQ. Too late. Beginning message. HQ has received reports that the wetlands of Thailand are being threatened by an invasive species. Sounds serious. Invasive species are animals or plants that are in a place where they don't belong. A bit like my computer virus. Oh. These golden apple snails are from South America, but have been spotted thousands of miles away in the swamps of Thailand. If they are allowed to breed and multiply unchecked, they could eat all the plants, leaving nothing for the local animals to eat. Your mission is to locate the snails and find a way to stop them damaging the wetlands. End of message. Gosh, it's scary that something as teeny tiny as a snail can threaten a whole gigantic wetland. Snails are able to eat 10% of their body weight every day. The equivalent of Andy eating 30 lettuces. Wow. And when there are thousands of snails, imagine how quickly they'll be able to munch their way through all those plants. Then we better investigate, and quick. It's time to go on a global adventure. Andy, my audio sensors indicate animal life in the immediate area, but visual confirmation is negative. You mean you can hear the animals but not see them? <laughs> well, that's normal. Most animals are very good at staying hidden. Like that chameleon. <laughs> no chameleon detected. Correction, chameleon detected. Animals are very good at hiding. Exactly. Ah, oh, we need a plan. We'll start by shrinking down. Our cat may not stay hidden if we're tiny too. Engaging shrink mode. Great. Now, we need to search this forest from top to bottom. Andy. We'll leave no stone or leaf unturned. Andy. We need to find that cat before the storm arrives. It's behind you. Hey? Oh, 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 it's no bigger than a leaf. No wonder it was hard to spot. Oh. 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 <clears throat> Good job, Scout. Quick, let's follow it. No good, Scout. I can't keep up. Hey? Where's Scout gone? Andy out of range. Mission is time critical. I must attempt to complete it alone. Searching memory files for cat location method. Cat location method uploaded. Here, kitty kitty. Here, kitty kitty. We're a bit stuck. There's an alligator blocking our path. Alligator? That sounds serious. They can be very dangerous. Is there anything you can do to help us get past it? Uh, let me see. That's interesting. What is it? It says here alligators are far less active in the winter months, as are cold-blooded reptiles who get their warmth from sunbathing. Like turtles. Exactly. According to this, if you're very careful, keep your distance and don't make much noise, you should be able to get past it without any trouble. Thanks, Jen. How's the Explorer? All sorted. I managed to use the thrusters to hover us out of the swamp water. It was just a simple matter of recalibrating the directional controls and adjusting the water resistance as well as heat and pressure balance. Brilliant. Nice one, Jen. Thanks, Andy. And good luck finding a manatee. Come on, Scout. We need to keep our distance and be quiet if we're going to get past this sleepy alligator. Phew! Safely passed. Right, now to find a manatee. But we may not be able to spot one on the riverbed from up here. It's looking pretty deep. I think it might be time for a dip. 
Activating underwater mode. Uploading Aquasuit. Great! Time to get wet. Oh, look! A manatee! And not just one, there's two of them. A mother and a baby. Oh, don't they look incredible? Affirmative. Manatees are herbivores. That means they eat plants, not fish. They particularly like grazing on seagrass, which is probably why manatees are sometimes called sea cows. What's the temperature like, Scout? Scanning. 17 degrees Celsius and dropping. Oh, I wonder how they're going to keep warm. They look like they know where they're going. These manatees are definitely on a mission. Let's follow them. Oh, how cute! There's been a baby boom. <laughs> right, first of all, we need to work out who's here. Spotted hyena clan. Mostly female. Estimate, 60 individuals, including 12 newborn cubs, approximately 12 weeks of age. Thanks, Scout. But I wonder what they're all saying to each other. <laughs> High-ranking hyena mother identified, along with her two female cubs. Ah, oh, well spotted, Scout. Andy to Jen. We found a high-ranking female with her twin sister cubs. Great work, you two. I think you should stick with them and keep watching for any interesting behaviours. Understood, Jen. Andy out. Before we get any closer, let's shrink down so we don't scare them. Engage shrink mode. <laughs> Whoa! Watch it! <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> oh, now play nicely. Andy, a low-ranking male, has approached the mother. <laughs> she is displaying some unusual body language. Hmm, what's going on there? Jen, check this out. Something really interesting is happening with the mother. Replaying video feed. She's making herself look bigger. Wait, there's something else. Her tail, Andy, is pointing straight up. Hmm, what's she doing now? I wonder. <gasps> Mum's showing her teeth to another smaller male. And the male is backing away, bobbing his head. It's almost like he's trying to show them he's not a threat. This must be part of their secret code. And now the sisters are copying their mum. Oh, you're right, Jen. This must be their way of saying we're more important than you are. <laughs> Analyzing Pebble Mound. Analysis confirms this mound is made up of 6,989 pebbles. Correction, 6,990 pebbles. Oh, well, Scout, I think we've discovered who made this. It's our friend, the River Chub. Based on the quantity of stones and size of structure, I estimate this took around a day to construct. And for such a small fish, it's a huge achievement. But why? Why go to all this trouble? Oh, he's off again. Oh, clearly he hasn't finished it yet. Intruder alert. Intruder alert. This is not the same river chub. It must be a rival male trying to steal pebbles. Yeah, you. Get your own stones and leave his alone. Oh, our friend's back. He's trying to barge the intruder out of his territory. Oh, and it's working! Yes! He's seen off the rival. Now he can get back to collecting stones. We'll wait here, Scout. 
and make sure no one else tries to take his pebbles. 6,996 6,997 7,000 Target amount reached Oh, what happens now? Oh, that's Jen calling Hi Jen, everything okay? Hi Andy the solar panels are fixed and the batteries are charging, but the tide is on its way back in. You need to hurry. How are you getting on? Well, we found the mound. It was made by a fish called a river chub. Wow, a fish. Can I see? Patting video feed to you now, Jen. Thanks, Scout. The question is, why? We're not sure yet, Jen. Well, who's this now? Not another pebble thief, I hope. It sure is hot out here. The sun is absolutely sweltering. And there's no shade. Wait a second. That shadow wasn't there a moment ago. He... Hello. It's a giraffe. Well, thanks for the shade. Um, I don't suppose you know whereabouts the Okavanga Delta is from here? Too busy eating, eh? You must be able to see lots from up there. <laughs> but if I was as tall as you, I'd probably be able to see where the Okavanga Delta was. That gives me an idea. Activate shrink mode. Perfect. I better start climbing. I'm still only halfway. <laughs> Phew! I made it. Ooh. Still no sign of the Okavanga Delta, even from all the way up here. Oh, I was sure I was going in the right direction. Now what do I do? Andy, how are you getting on? Oh, uh, yes, fine, Jen. Have you managed to find the Delta yet using your epic human compass skills? Uh, not quite yet, but almost there. <laughs> how are you getting on with the solar panels? Great. We've nearly finished calibrating, haven't we, Scout? Affirmative. Wow. Very sunny up there, Scout. I hope you remember to put your sunscreen on. Negative. Robots do not wear sunscreen, Andy. No, I was... Yes, yeah. you're quite right, Scout. Good luck with the alterations, Jen. I'll update you on the mission as soon as I find... I mean, as soon as I get to the Delta. <laughs> if I knew which way to go... Oh, hello there. Oh, it's an oxpecker. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Oh. For such a tiny frog, you move pretty quick. <laughs> Wait! It's Scout and the Scarlet Macaws. Oh, you've led me straight to them. Nice one, my froggy friend. But how am I going to get all the way up there? Um, oh, maybe he has an idea. <clears throat> oh. So, what's the plan? How are we going to get to the top of the tree? <laughs> Now, that's what I call an express delivery. And it's our male and female pair. Hello, I'm Andy. We've come to see you and your chicks. Uh, 
Are they around here somewhere? I detect that the mail is getting ready to fly again. Oh, perhaps it'll lead us to the chicks. Uh, excuse me. I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to grab a lift with you. <laughs> this should be fun. The view of the rainforest is incredible! I've got to call Jen. Hi, Jen! You'll never guess where I am! Oh, how come you're dressed like that? Um, things have gotten a little damp here. But don't worry, I'll have it dried out in a minute. So, where are you? I'm flying over the rainforest with a scarlet macaw! Amazing! Have you found the chicks yet? No, not yet! I was hoping that it would take us to them. But we just keep flying on for miles and miles. You don't think it's going to the sea to collect the salt for the chicks, do you? The sea is over 500 kilometres from here. I'm not sure even a scarlet macaw can fly that far in one go. You're right. It's a proper mystery. Oh, it looks like we're coming into land, Jen. I'll call you later. Whoa. Whoa. Well, that was a soft but muddy landing. <laughs> All monkeys love to groom each other. It's how they keep clean by picking out dirt and bugs from their fur. It's also a way of keeping everyone in the troop happy and friendly. There's another female already at the top of the tower. Can you drop me over there, please, Jen? Certainly. Look, there's the female. And she's still cuddling the baby. Let's hope this works. Hello. I'm here from uh, Andy's Flying Hair Care. Would you like a complimentary groom? Oh, this will help keep your fur in tip-top condition. <laughs> Let me tell you, this one definitely needs it. Oh, hello, Mum. Why don't you come and join us? The female and the baby won't be able to resist being a part of this. Hey, you with the baby, over here. Fancy a groom? Why don't you come and join in? Oh, it's working. Jen, you're right. My cats really do love grooming each other. We've done it! The little one is back with its mum, at last. Nice one, Scouts. Great work, Jen. And you, Andy. I'm heading back to the landing spot now. Carry on with the big count. Right, should we split up again? Negative, Andy. Analysis of rescue mission data indicates teamwork as most efficient method. My revised calculations suggest we should complete the mission together. Affirmative. I need to get to dry land. Hmm, I've got an idea. Wish me luck. <laughs> One more jump to go. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> ah, mud and lots of it. Uh oh, it's a bit crowded around here. And we know how grumpy the hippos can get. Sometimes they even start fighting. Oh, I think I'll get out of their way. No one wants to be in the middle of fighting hippos. Oh no, the mud. I can't move. I'm stuck and, and they're getting closer. I think I'm going to need some help. Andy to Jen? Jen here. How can I help Andy? 
Um, well, I've made it to the Okavanga Delta, but I'm kind of stuck in the mud and in the middle of fighting hippos. I don't suppose anyone can come and unstick me? <laughs> OK, Andy, I've got an idea. Scout, I need you to go and pull Andy out of the mud. Can you lock onto his location? Affirmative. Coordinates locked. Scout is on the way to you, Andy. Shouldn't be too long. Great. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> oh, hurry. <laughs> Oh, Scout, am I glad to see you. Deploying rope. Hold on tight, Andy. <sighs> Thanks, Scout. That was close. Wow, what a view. Hello again, my friend. <laughs> You're eating the mud as well. There must be something really special about this mud. And you're not alone either. All these other birds are eating it too. Hmm. Oh, hi, Scout. Hello, Andy. Scout, can you get a mud sample back to Jen for her to analyse, please, as quickly as possible? Affirmative. And I better grab another lift with my friend here before he leaves. Otherwise, it's a long walk back. Setting boosters to maximum power. No, wait, 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 wait! Approaching Explorer. Jen, I have a mud sample for analysis. No problem, Scout. The Explorer is nice and dry again with all systems working. Ah. Oh, look! There's Mum down there on that old tree. Coming in for another landing. This time, I'll be sure to hang on. Ah! Oh. 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 Phew! <laughs> I made it. And look! It's the chicks! Oh, so that's where they've been hiding. Ah! Mum and Dad are using a tree hollow as a nest. Jen to Andy. Hi, Jen. I found the chicks. Oh, brilliant. And I've just analysed the mud sample that Scout brought me. And guess what? It contains really high levels of salt. Of course. That's why Dad flew all that way. The mud bank must be the only place around here to get salt. And now Dad's feeding the mud back to the chicks. So this is how they get the salt they need to develop healthy bones and brains. How clever. Well done, team. That's mission accomplished. I'm heading back now. Nice to meet you, chicks. Enjoy your dinner. Destination reached. Lemur detected in canopy. Oh, well spotted, Scout. Oh, you can see why they're called blue-eyed black lemurs. Look at those bright blue eyes. Anomaly alert. Andy, this lemur has blue eyes, but it is brown, not black. Oh, that's because it's a female scout. The females are brown, but the males are always black. But both have blue eyes. And if I'm not mistaken... Yes! Oh, it's a baby! Oh, how cute! Right, come on, scout, let's get closer. And then hopefully we'll be able to find out how they deal with pesky bugs. Beginning arboreal ascent. Arboreal ascent? Oh, climbing the tree. <laughs> well, it's easier for you. You can fly. Well, I was right. It's a mother and her baby. The baby must be about a month old. In fact, there are lots of mothers and babies. At this age, the babies still rely on mum for milk. And for their daily wash. <laughs> hmm. The parents look like they're trying to rest. But the babies have other ideas. Hey, you! No biting! Poor mum. Honestly. It looks like these mums are just too sleepy. And they don't seem to be having any problems with bugs because they're not scratching. 
Andy, scratching activity detected. Well spotted, Scout. Poor thing. He must be really itchy to be scratching that much. Upload Acrosuit. Perfect. Let's go. <laughs> right. First things first, Scout. If we're going to find a fish, we need to think like a fish and look like a fish. Well, size-wise at least. Activate Shrink Mode. That's better. Whoa, check out this bubbling sand. They're made when freshwater springs bubble up from deep underground. <laughs> Come in and join me, Scout. <laughs> it's like being on an underwater roller coaster. <laughs> as fun as this is, we've got a fishy mystery to solve, Scout. It's also making me very dizzy, so I think it's time to move on. You weren't kidding earlier, Scout. This water really is crystal clear. My scans indicate the water is filtered through a permeable rock called limestone. A permeable rock is one where water can trickle through it. And when it does, any dirt in the water is removed. That's what makes it so clear. Clear enough to see them. Scout, they might be the fish we're looking for. According to my gizmo, these are fish called Piripatanga. Query, why are they all congregating here, near the surface? Good question, Scout. What I do know is that the water is so clear that we can even see above the surface. Andy to Jen. Hi, Andy. How are you getting on? Well, we found some fish, but these ones don't seem to be eating berries. Maybe they aren't the ones we're looking for. But... The waters are so clear, we can even see the explorer from down here. Oh, yeah, you're directly below me. And it looks like you're not the only ones. What is it, Jen? My scans have picked up movement in the trees above you. Both of you stay where you are until I've identified whatever it is. OK, Jen, we will. Standing by. Andy, judging by the speed and movement, it appears to be a monkey of some kind. Scout, it's safe enough for you to investigate. Can you show me what's up there? Affirmative. Resuming normal proportion. Patting video feed to you now, Jen. Thanks, Scout. It's OK, Andy. It's a group of brown capuchins, a species of monkey. The capuchins appear to be moving away from this location. So are the fish. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, they seem to be following the monkeys. How strange. Well, Andy, you stick with the fish, and Scout, you keep an eye on the monkeys. I have two eyes, Jen. Do you have a preference for which eye is used? I mean, you can keep watching them, and you can use both eyes. Affirmative. In the meantime, I'll keep an eye out. Oh, I, I mean... I'll keep watching out for any dangers from up here. Good plan, Jen. Andy out. Wait for me, fishies. We need to get the chick back to its mum and quick. Hi, Jen. Andy, my scans indicate a large amount of water in your immediate area. But I can't see where it's coming from. Oh, I can see. It looks like it's starting to rain. Hang on a minute. That's not rain. That water's coming from the sprinkler system. The farmers must be watering the crops. Andy, you and the chick need to leave the crop circle. That much water could be dangerous when you're both as small as you are. Come on, little one. This way. And you, Scout. Made it. Oh, She must have been looking for you. That's it. Go on. You catch up. Go 
We'll be safe and sound with her again. <laughs> well, I guess that's another mission accomplished. <laughs> See you later, Bob White Quails. Come on, Scout. Let's head back to the Explorer and upload our findings to the database. And maybe get you cleaned up. Affirmative. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Andy's Amazing Adventures. There's lots to see and so many amazing creatures to meet along the way. So don't forget to hit subscribe. Come on, let's go.